Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name is Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral and it's so great to have you with us on this Friday morning for this service of morning prayer. Let us begin. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the nation, says the Lord of hosts. Let us pray. O Lord of heaven and earth, of life and love, of peace and hope, it is in you that we live and move and have our being. We greet you. We salute you. We thank you for this new day, for this chance to be alive. Because of you, we are both forgiven and free. May we sense your gentle touch, dear Lord, as you help us up and out of our early morning fits and starts. Please open our minds, our eyes, our hearts, our hands to receive you. Help us to see and experience you in all the corners of our life and in all dimensions of your creation. Please continue to push us and pull us so that we can better know and love you. O oh Lord, hang in and hang tough with us and those for whom we pray. We need your help and your courage. We need your understanding and your grace. We need your perspective. We need your peace. We need your patience and your healing. And more than anything, we need you. Amen. Our colleagues for today. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel of Mark, second chapter, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus preached, perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Here ends the lesson. The nature of prayer is a wonderful thing. The power of prayer is an amazing thing. I love this story, it's one of my favorites. It shows the power of prayer or the power of effort to care for someone who was loved. This paralytic had friends, family, who cared about him enough that they were literally 
willing to dig through the roof of this house, roof that was made of, of grass and um, wood, and to do it so that they could lower this man down so that Jesus could heal him. That's a wonderful dedication to a person to do that. When we pray for people we love, when we pray for people in need, whether we love them or not, actually, what we're doing is we're digging through the roof to get that person closer to God. I remember, and I've talked about this before, when Melissa was so sick and in the hospital and we thought that we might lose her many, many years ago, shortly after Eliza was born. And Eliza was maybe three weeks old and Melissa was very, very ill. And I was sort of trying to hold it all together. Marshall was three years old. And it was pretty overwhelming. And yet, my church community was praying for me. They were praying for all of us. They were praying for Melissa, most especially. And I have to be honest to say that I could feel those prayers. I could feel those prayers buoy me up and carry me along some, during some really terrible, difficult, scary days. It was like, it was like the days weren't any easier or less stressful, but there was something undergirding you, something holding you up. The power of prayer is an amazing thing. When we pray for someone, it's not that we make God pay attention to that person. When we pray for someone, what we're doing is we're adding our love and concern for that person to God's love and concern for that person. And all that love and that concern, it matters. It goes out into the universe and it's echoed by our Lord who loves us all. So keep praying for the people you care about and most especially care about the people you don't care about. Keep digging through the roof so that you can help someone get closer to God because the power of prayer is a miraculous thing and never to be taken lightly. Amen. Now would you join with me as we pray together in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you alone know the secrets of our hearts. You alone understand the burdens that we carry and the pain that we bear in this life. As we make our way through this day, we need your healing grace. Grant us not only those things that we ask for, but more importantly, give us those good things we need. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. On this morning, we lift up to you all those who are on our hearts and minds today. John. Michael. for the blessings of a new year. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I hope wherever you are that you have a really wonderful day. And remember in the words that Jesus taught us when he said, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, do good and lend expecting nothing in return, be merciful just as your Father is merciful, do not judge and you will not be judged, do not condemn and you will not be condemned. 
Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. For the measure you give will be the measure you receive. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>